one of my heroes was Jim Jarmusch, and uh, Stranger in Paradise kind of wanted me, uh, got me into becoming a producer. Well, I'm excited to see the movie. I haven't seen it, you know, so I, I, I think I'm in it, but I don't know. I think I'll probably be the oldest person. This, I was a generation before, so these are the young whippersnappers, right? What did inspire you in one word? Um, existential fear. That's two words. To me, there was nothing else to do was to, but to make films. I, you know, didn't know how to do it, but we just did it. And, you know, and then Celine saw them and now she made this film. So it's cool. What I think is sympa is that elle, elle a fait le travail bien après que en fait je n'importe qui de nous aurait pu faire ce documentaire. Mais ce que je trouve intéressant, c'est qu'elle arrive 20 ans après et qu'elle est super curieuse et qu'elle le fait. We are using the one. Yeah. I like the, I like the, uh, the eyepiece there. So you can really, really hold it on the shoulder. That's good. Blank City tells the inspiring tale of renegade filmmakers that emerged from the creative Lower East Side of New York City in the late 1970s. We met French director Céline Denier in Tompkins Square Park, where she tells us about the explosive energy of those downtown artists and the captivating oral history that she crafted. Blank City is like a, a love letter to New York in the late 70s and mid 80s. Things were moving so fast then. It was like television and Blondie and the Ramones, and then two months later that was over, and it was like nothing I'd ever heard before. There really was this explosion, not only in film, but in music and theater and performance. This philosophy, like do it yourself, even if you didn't have any skills, or if you didn't play an instrument, you didn't care, it didn't matter. It was just like the idea of doing something. Anything you wanted to do or people you might meet, it all was possible. I bought some film from the drugstore, put it in the camera and started rolling. They would literally call up to my window and we'd go down the block and shoot a scene. It felt like we owned the city and we could shoot without permits, without restriction. It was right at the peak of the debauchery of New York. It seemed like New York at that time was very cinematic and it was kind of a pure period. It was very cheap. You can live in a loft for like a couple of hundred bucks and you can spend a lot of time, you know, like speaking or like working on your art. It was all about wanting to be very different from what mainstream movies and culture were. I'm looking for the graffiti artist. We are all graffiti artists. Well, you had this community of like artists and they decided to collaborate to create like something unique. And it was as well, you know, like a kind of like alternative of the Hollywood movies that you had. It's really like the beginning of the independent film movement. No one was holding back. They were telling the ugly, naked truth as they felt it and as they lived it. There were some things that we did in the films that I would never do now because I would be too paranoid that somebody would arrest me for. It was like the best time, the worst time of my life. You ready to take my picture?